What's up, reefers? I got more reefing. That's right, I got more reefing over here. Alex Wilson over here, Alex Pora Corals. Come check it out. What do we got today? Well, this is my 20 gallon quarantine system. That's right, it's still doing good. It is just 20 gallons. It is fishless. Did you hear me? That's right, I said it. It is fishless. I've done a fishless system right here. Supposed to be a coral quarantine, not just a coral quarantine, but a quarantine, um, you know, of anything coming in here, not just coral diseases, but anything hitchhiking, such as especially velvet, ick, but mainly velvet is protecting my yellow tang over here in the main display, right? So that's the basic idea. If you haven't been watching my channel and don't know what's going on with my aquariums, this is it right here. And yeah, it's been an interesting system, you know, it's just 20 gallons. This is, I uh, tried doing it before, 10 gallons. You know, I had two 10 gallon split systems. Just didn't work out, it was just too, way too small. So this is the absolute smallest I would absolutely do. But then again, you know, if I was gonna do this again, I would definitely just go ahead and do uh, a full system having a, a sump underneath, just much easier, much cleaner and uh, definitely just easier to uh, work on um, but the main thing about it is just to expand it just in case you know with a sump you can do absolutely anything if you need to just suddenly um, just put something on the system boom you can do it you know in one two three and with this one here it's limited uh, that's the space that's it that's all i have to work with right here and this is the Aquamax protein skimmer filter system, what have you. And yeah, I mean, it's doing pretty good. It's got its filter protein skimmer and it's skimming away. And, um, you know, you know, it has an area for mechanical and a uh, little bit of, you know, area for physical uh, chemicals or, you know, a chamber, media chamber, filter area. Yeah, I don't have any of that running on it right now, just nothing in it. So, yeah, on these, both of my systems right now, I am running you know, zero mechanical filtration and zero water changes. And did you hear that right? That's right, I said it. Zero water changes, that's right. I'm absolutely crazy. I'm a crazy nut reefer. Don't do as I, yeah. Don't do as I do either. I mean, just, this is just for me. It's uh, just what I'm doing with what works for me. But so far, so good. You know, I just do water changes in extreme emergencies when you know in the past i've overdosed on the alkalinity alkalinity shot way up water changes or you know some other disaster thing like that but generally on a regular basis i but but i am monitoring of course though alkalinity nitrate and phosphate which by the way on these systems alkalinity has um been high in like around 11 not sure why but you know it, it, whether it was the no pox or um, some other reason, you know, it's just uh, crushed coral in there. Uh, I was d dosing the all for reef, um, but that seemed to be just fine. So I don't think that it was, I mean, it was that, it was a long, long time ago now. So finally the alkalinity started going down on these systems. And so, yep, now they're back at about nine, except for the main display over there, which bumped up back to, uh, back to 11 alkalinity last week so i have to check it out this week see what's going on that's why i've been testing it just uh just once a week um right now and you know i do alkalinity every other day when i know that there's an issue and so when there's not once a week and nitrate nitrates on the system they've been soaking them up you know and for a while there they went up and so yeah you know in order to get them down i used the little bit of the um, bio pellets and that's a, like a carbon source physical source of, of carbon um, dosing material and I really like it much better than the nopox because it is slow and much more stable I mean the nopox it's good it's good I mean it works it works but the only thing is, is about that nopox is that it's definitely you know, it makes your system a little bit more unstable you know definitely compared to using just the um, just the bio pellets such that you know the no pox is um you know and that's what it says in instructions too it says with the no pox oh the, you know you when you're using it you're supposed to, to do a minimum dose on it and you're not supposed to not do the minimum dose 
So when you're doing the minimum dose consistently, it's a little bit more stable, but even so, you know, they recommend that you're, you're testing at least every other day, if not every day with that system. And so it's definitely um, something that, uh, that I prefer to just use the bio pellets for the nitrate and then for the phosphates, the granulated ferric oxide, I've had, I had an issue. But, you know, I got through those on both of these systems, no problem. And now it's back to getting too low, of course. The nitrates and phosphates are pulling all the way down to zero. So what do I do? I just dosed it with a little bit of the liquid Naophos and a little bit of the liquid Nao nitrate from Bright Rail Aquatics to get them back up to where I want them. Where do I want them, by the way? At around uh, five parts per million on the nitrate and then on the phosphate at 0.1. Five parts per million nitrate, so, or uh, 0.1. Dose it up to about 0.1 parts per million phosphate. So, so good so far there. What do we got here? Checking out these guys. Got my Disco Soma Mushroom Corner here. And here's a shot of this one uh, blue spotted red Disco Soma. And what's interesting about this guy is that he, this was the mother colony. And yeah, he was huge, huge mother, well, not colony, but mother uh, individual. And this individual with bones was busting out the babies here, there, left, and right, everywhere. I've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I don't know, like eight, ten babies from this from this one uh, individual. And then, yeah, suddenly now it's like zipped out and looked like it's dying. I thought it was getting stung previously by one of the hairy mushrooms, but I guess that wasn't the case. I think it was just actually getting old. I think it's just getting old. It looks zapped out and that's something really... Just um, did sting it or something eating it. I doubt. It. I think it's just getting old, and I think I just we'll keep an eye on it, guys. See if it comes back, what happens, or whether it actually dies and disappears. But yeah, I've got all kinds of babies over here. So I don't know if mushrooms do that or not, but we'll have to keep an eye on these disco somas to see what's going on if they do or do not do this. It's crazy. Here's a close up shot of this dude. It's the gold spotted green disco soma. And an Iron Man right there, and of course, the other mushrooms on the other side. And so, yeah, everything else seems to be doing pretty good in here. I think I already got a shot of these guys. And yeah, this is the orange interstellar, pink interstellar, and the orange interstellar mushrooms, as well as the Le Nebula Green Disco so much right there. And yeah, Acropora is in here so far. Still doing good in here, fingers crossed. I got a rainbow splice right there. It's some sick. I don't even want to talk about it. It's, it's growing a little bit though. I'm crazy, maybe one millimeter so far. And everybody else in here, we got, um, is that Kryptonite? Tenuous, it's got three activated tips on them and looking good. And the back right there, Rainbow Lil is sick because he see how he's latching onto both of the rocks on either side of him. He's starting to, uh, Pool out and across absolutely everywhere. Rainbow Loom encrusting monster. Key lime pie looking good. And up front right here, this is the green green uh, skin. No, frog skin. Frog skin, crazy huge, gigantic branching um, uh, stag. Thick green stag. So really like the look of them. Hopefully when they do good, I mean when they start growing, they grow crazy, almost too big for the aquariums here so we'll see what to do with this monster should call him a green monster but they call him frog skin so there it is frog skin what's up you thing what's going on over here so I'm, uh, I moved all kinds of stuff around I moved everything here there and everywhere I got some of these um, orange I moved these uh, jawbreaker candy crush I don't know what they are Crazy orange mushrooms absolutely everywhere. And there's him some more over there. And oh, here's two more of these blue spotted uh, uh, red disco somas. I don't know. I just threw them there for now. I don't know where to put these guys here and there. And I've moved up. There it is. This is the blue uh, purple style of four that was in my coral quarantine system. And so, yeah, I mean, the idea of the quarantine system, by the way, is that I'm just trying to mainly protect the fish in here from the velvet. Therefore, anything that goes into the quarantine system gets a full two and a half month 
quarantine. That's right, I said it. What's up with that? Two and a half months, 72 days. That's how long it takes. If uh, uh, some velvet were to uh, get in the main in there so and that's the full time for them to actually um, completely be burned out in theory so in practice though it's probably actually much lower I could probably get away with doing um, two months but just to be safe uh, you know in theory to go ahead and do the full two and a half months just to be 100% sure that there won't be any issues because that kind of is the whole point of the quarantine system so that's why I do it the full 72 days, the full two and a half months. So, so good so far on that one right here. Here's a shot of my display aquarium. So far, so good over here. What's going on? It is crazy. Looking good. I still got a mess. Well, I still got red slime here and there everywhere that I try to get with a toothbrush and, and brush it up with my hand almost on a daily basis and it's coming up a lot from the coral scrubber underneath that's right coral scrubber what is going on it is a uh, refugium underneath that's where I have my refugium and crushed coral and everything down there is still, you know, still the same I got the orange red slime down there too so it's kind of coming from down there and it's getting less and less though and now it's like kind of um, coming up here more but it should disappear I believe more and more over time as it kind of settles in down underneath there on the coral scrubber system so right here I got the I put my uh, circle fighting right there yep there it is looking crazy right there gonna be getting some good shade hopefully to these area here for my mushrooms and my uh, dragon soul brain gone the astria right here I got these uh, these um, what are these dudes? These are the Rhodactus. I got the purple Rhodactus, orange Rhodactus, green Rhodactus. I got a rainbow of Rhodactus right here, like my Rhodactus corner. And of course, I still got the bounce orange disco. So I'm right here just bounce out on me. I think it's created just from excess light. Well, there it is, folks. And then I've got some of the orange disco. So I just kind of bailed here, there, and everywhere. I got the uh, and of course I got the cut to the philia right here looking crazy and then I got the bubble corals right there green bubble white bubble and small green bubble corals that's my bubble area right there this right here is the Duncan doing good and so yep I moved these guys over here I got this um there's the the oh yeah here's these guys right here these are the um, Digitata's right here. I got the orange digitata, green digitata, purple digitata. This is my digitata garden right there. So hopefully it'll work out right there. They'll kind of be, uh, imagine them launching, latching themselves onto these rocks right here and then growing in together into one like mess of digitata branching madness. At least that's the idea of it. And in the back right there, I got the little splash of the um, rainbow loom. So I'm hoping Rainbow Loom Boom is going to go crazy over that rock right there and start to encrust onto the back wall. We'll see what's going on there. So check out for that. And we got Euphilia Garden right here. Hammers. Well, I got my hammers and then my uh, frog spawns. So I got the green frog spawn. I got my splatter hammer. I got my golden hammer. I got my green hammer. And then I got my green with the pink tips. There it is, looking pretty cool right here, so I might get it one more, squeeze them in right there, because I did have one cool one I liked to add as a hammer, green and purple, but it died, so that's the thing, get another frag of it, see what's going on, and more of the orange, uh, crush, jawbreaker mushrooms there, put one over there, what's this over here, this is the um, Frankenberry, Frankenberry, yeah. Acro porous frag definitely doing good getting good color and good pop extension good growth so looking forward to it kind of tabling out right there taking up that whole space we'll see but you know everything I try to resist on everything as far as um, gluing things down onto the rocks and I'm gonna absolutely don't have to because this way I have the ability to move them around as will it for as long as possible and but you know the same thing if i am going to glue something down to a rock i i will 
However, you know, it, even I will try to do it to as small of a rock as possible. That way, that's like its base if the rock. If I want to move that individual coral, well, then I can just move the rock that's underneath it without, you know, having to move the whole entire reef or break off huge pieces of it, right? Well, anyway, that's in theory. This is the green bali slime right there. It's almost died. I mean, just one green speck on the top of it, so hopefully it's going to come back. But it's still alive. And that one's right there's a radical red stag. I can't really see it that well, but it's starting to grow ever so slightly good later right there, a couple millimeters. So, and then to the right is the green slimer. So there he is there. And I moved, that's a green millipora right there. Bonsai right there. And the other green uh, millipora right there. So, yep, hopefully they'll settle in nicely right there. I got the... This is my home wrecker to the left, and then the Walt Disney to the right, and yep, I mean, they're just about absolutely identical at this point. Can't really tell them apart one for the other, except for the fact that I think that the, that the home wrecker does have just a very hint of yellow on it, but it's just almost undetectable at this point, but that's one of the things that should start to color up more and more as it starts growing up into a bigger colony. And what do we got over here? Clams. Oh my god, they're still here. Five of the clams. There they are, guys. Clam garden. Doing good. And the Parietes Christmas tree worm rock. Still dead and dying. So one thing, too, is that I could put this... Uh, this is the other Christmas tree worm rock. The micro worms in this Parietes is doing good. And also, in theory, I might be able to grab some of this flake off a couple pieces of it and then reseed it with this other um, rock right here. Of course, it would take years and years for it to start to cover this whole thing. So I might put on it some rainbow no macro pore. That might be interesting. And so that's it. What else do we got? To move these guys over here. This is the, um, this is my uh, red fuego or no pink, pink fuego table so hopefully it'll, it'll table out and cover that area really nice right there and over here i got my uh salmon coral garden and so hopefully that these guys they got them all together right here they're going to kind of grow and all morph into one weird salmon coral um garden morph monster so there it is i got one two three four five of them right there be like i might move it around though but there they are for now so to the right over here though, I got the firework acropole right doing good. This is a table right here from Abe at Coral Euphoria. Looking really nice, good pulp extension, good color. And starting to grow really, really slowly. Yep, maybe right, Mandarin, that's what the Mandarin over here doing. Eating the copal pots over here. And so over here, this is my Stylo Flora garden. So I got right here the Pink Stylo 4 right there. Then I got my uh, Project X Green Stylo 4 right there. Jason Fox. And then on top of that, I have the the, the purple Stylo 4 and the other frag of the Jason Fox Bug Out Stylo 4. But thus far, it looks exactly the same as the Rainbow Stylo 4. So, yeah, there they are, guys. And uh, oh, yeah, one other thing right here. Okay, so on this side of the aquarium right here, I, I moved over the frag. Um, in this corner, the one frag of the rainbow splice. So here's a good shot of the first frag that I got of the rainbow splice. And it's just sitting here still alive. And it's got a good green color on them. And uh, pulp extension probably could be a little more. But there it is. So check back for future updates. But my idea is that right here I can easily get some good shots of it and could check on its growth. And it should dominate that whole corner right there and get some good shade on some of the stuff underneath it right there. The brains and this and that. Alright guys, well that's it. Alright, I'll let you go. But happy reefing and check back for the next update. Bye.